If you're a fan of Brave Wilderness, then you are no stranger to Coyote Peterson taking stings from terrifying insects. Ah! <laughs> Warrior wasp, tarantula hawk, bullet ant, he's done them all. These insects have helped bring Brave Wilderness to millions of people around the world. And to commemorate them, we've created this beautiful poster that highlights Coyote's painful, yet educational climb up the sting index. To give back to these fascinating creatures that have given so much to Brave Wilderness, a portion of proceeds from the poster will be donated to support native bees and other pollinators in the United States. In this episode, we'll revisit these stings in order from very painful to more painful to the most extreme. Ah! Life-altering, ah! mind-bending, ah! agonizing pain that can be delivered from the insect ah! kingdom. Inspired by entomologist Justin Schmidt, grab your EpiPen and get ready because we're about to watch Coyote climb his own sting index. What I am standing in, is the attack zone of the harvester ant. I'm basically just gonna put my hands down right here in front of their burrow and let them hop on. The harvester ant has the most potent venom in the insect kingdom. 450 harvester ant stings could potentially kill a 150 pound human. Harvester ants can bite and sting, but the bite contains no venom. It's only used to hold the ant in place so it can sting repetitively. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the strike zone with the fire ant. You guys ready? Your shot good? Yep. Fire ant venom is composed of alkaloids that have neurotoxic properties, and the white pustules appear because of the insoluble nature of the alkaloids. Fire ants were accidentally introduced into the U.S. from South America in the 1930s. The ants quickly spread, becoming a major agricultural and urban pest. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the yellow jacket. Here we go. Like many paper wasps, yellow jackets gather fibers from wood and plant stems, which they mix with their saliva to create their paper-like nests. Get you good there? Got me there, yeah. Yellow jackets can sting multiple times and have a smooth stinger, unlike honeybees, which have barbed stingers and can only sting once. Ah, I got the stinger like all the way inserted into my arm. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to be stung by the cicada killer. Oh my goodness, that stinger is long. Here we go. Cicada killer eggs hatch in one to three days. Then the larva eats the cicada over the course of a week. Then the larva forms a silk cocoon and pupates for 10 months before emerging the next year. A single female cicada killer can lay as many as 15 eggs, despite only living a couple of months. Uh, got me more than once, too. Only female cicada killers have the ability to sting. Long stinger. Oh, yeah, it's throbbing. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to take on the Bee Beard Challenge. Let's do this. No turn back now, buddy. European honeybees are responsible for pollinating one third of all the food Americans eat. Ow, stuck in the lip. <laughs> mm. You got it. You got Getting this. stung a lot. I got stung about six times. A queen can lay up to 1,500 eggs in a single day. Wow. Honeybees live in large colonies ranging from 1,000 to 60,000 individuals. All right, I think I need to get them off. That's a lot of pain. Oh, you're, but you've almost got it. You're so close. All right, All right. All right gotta get them off. Go ahead and just jump real hard and just knock them off. Whoa! They're all over my face! I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the cow killer. Are you ready? Are you ready? No, I'm never ready. One. Despite being called velvet two. ants, they are actually wasps. You good? Yeah. Get your shot. I'm going to place it right down on my arm. Females are wingless and have stingers, while the males are stingerless and have wings. That's pretty cool. <laughs> The oldest fossil evidence of velvet ants comes from 40 million-year-old amber, 
discovered in the Dominican Republic. Oh wow, oh wow, okay. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the warrior wasp. Here we go. Worker wasps will often warn the colony of danger by scraping their mandibles against the nest walls. This behavior has given these wasps the nickname drumming wasps. Warrior wasps have an elaborate threat display, which consists of several wasps beating their wings in a synchronized fashion while guarding a nest. Warrior wasps build nests high up in tree branches. These nests are a single comb and have a very distinct oval shape. Ah. Talk to me, what are you feeling? Oh man, oh man, yep, nope, it's bad. Oh man, it's getting a lot worse. What does it really feel like? quickly. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the tarantula hawk. Let's go for it. Tarantula hawks are the largest spider wasp species in the world. Here we go, three. I bet you didn't know that tarantula hawks are the official state insect of New Mexico. It takes about 35 days for a tarantula hawk egg to hatch once laid on a paralyzed tarantula carcass. Gross. Male tarantula hawks do not have a stinger and are completely harmless to humans, as well as tarantulas. However, they are very territorial towards other male tarantula hawks. Ah! Roadrunners are one of the few animals that will prey on tarantula hawks. That is one brave bird. Ah! Ah! I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to take on the bullet ant challenge. Are you ready? Let's do it. At over an inch long, bullet ants are one of the largest ant species in the world. Three. The bullet ant is the only known living species within the genus Paraponera. Oh! Okay, it's off, it's off, it's off! Oh my gosh! The toxin in this ant's venom is called Panera toxin, which attacks its victim's pain receptors. Oh my god, it is really bad! Oh my gosh, I think it has the tarantula hawk topped! Despite their powerful sting, bullet ants live peacefully in large colonies at the base of jungle trees, where they forage for plant matter, nectars, and small insects, which they feed to their young. Right into the vein, there is the sting insertion point right there. Oh my gosh, it is like, oh, it's hot. Oh, I can feel the venom already, right in my forearm. <sighs> I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with Japanese giant hornet. One. Japanese giant hornets can grow to nearly two inches long and have three inch wingspans. The venom attacks the nervous system and can damage surrounding tissue through necrosis. That sounds awful. These large hornets hunt for a wide range of insect prey and often target colonies of European bees. The worker hornets dismember these bees with powerful mandibles and bring them back to their colony as a meal for the brood. There's where the stinger went in right there. Did you not see how slow the sting was? Oh! I see blood. In Japanese, the giant hornet is known as O Suzume Bachi, which means great sparrow bee. This is like the tarantula hawk. Look at the swelling that's beginning to form on my arm. Forearm is incredibly tall. Only about 45 seconds have gone by. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the Executioner Wasp. Here we go. The Executioner Wasp is one of the largest members of the paper wasp family found in Central and South America. Being a social insect, members of a colony cooperate to take care of the brood and defend the nest from potential predators. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's really bad really quick! Adult executioner wasps collect nectars and insect prey to feed their larvae. Oh, right there! Oh, you can see the venom coming right out of my arm right there, you see that? Oh my gosh! Oh, that hurts a lot! 
Similar to other wasp species, executioner wasps can deliver multiple stings at once. And facing a swarm of these would be anyone's worst nightmare. Coyote, are you okay? Yeah, I think he is, at least for now. If you like this epic recap of these painful moments, then you'll really like this epic poster commemorating Coyote's excruciating journey through the Sting Index. Buy yours today at shopbravewilderness.com. To discover ways you can help native pollinators in your own backyard, check out these quick tips in the video description below.